Hi guys, I hope you all are well. Today, in this video, we are going to talk about Asset Liability Committee, that is ALCO. In this video, we are going to cover various topics related to ALCO, like what is ALCO, what is duties and responsibilities, objectives of asset liabilities management, and other things as well. So let's start with it. The first thing is, what is ALCO? So an asset liability committee, ALCO, refers to committees consisting of senior level managerial employees who manage the risk associated with the company's assets and liabilities. ALCOs are usually found in companies that lend out money such as credit unions, mortgage companies, and banks. Asset liability committees are important in fostering communication and raising issues surrounding risk, liquidity, and potential interest rate fluctuations that can affect profit and threaten return. So basically, ALCO alludes to panels comprising of senior level administrators, administrative workers, who deal with the dangers related with the organization's benefit and liabilities. Asset obligation advisory groups are significant in cultivating correspondence and raising issues encompassing danger, liquidity, and potential financial cost vacillations. So the next thing that we are going to talk about is the duties and responsibilities of ALCOs. So, the complete list of duties and responsibilities of, of an ALCO vary from institution to institution. However, a general list of duties and responsibilities can be the first one is risk diversification and capital requirements. Second, liquidity management policy at the financial institution. Third, broad and specified policy on capital markets requirements. Fourth, yield and size of banks trading policy, including diversification between the type of instruments and currency. Fifth, interest rate and liquidity policy. Sixth, capital adequacy and risk policy. Seventh, benchmarking performance indicators. So these are the general duties and responsibilities of ALCO. That includes making interest rate and liquidity policies or capital adequacy and risk policy, or by making liquidity management policy, risk diversification and capital requirements. So these are the general duties and responsibilities of ALCO. The next thing that we are going to talk about is the objectives of asset liabilities management, that is ALM. So the various objectives are, the first one is planning to meet the liquidity needs. Second, arranging maturity pattern of assets and liabilities, third, spread management, fourth, gap management, and the last one is interest sensitivity analysis. So we are going to talk about in detail one by one. The first one is planning to meet the liquidity needs. Making funds available at a competitive price when they are required is the first task of ALM. The task is to achieve a proper mix of funds by keeping the level of non-interest funds to the bare minimum, maximum the fund allocation to high profit areas by, while simultaneously ensuring availability of funds to meet all eventualities. So basically, the first one is to making funds available at competitive price. This is the first task of ALM. That is, they have to ensure that a proper mix of funds by keeping the non-interest fund at the minimum and maximizing the fund allocation to the high profit areas. The second one is arranging maturity pattern of assets and liabilities. Matching of assets and liabilities over different time bands and keeping a tag on their price by limiting their exposure to interest rate risk are issues to be looked at in the ALM process. Controlling the rates received and paid to assets liabilities to maximize the spread or net income or net interest income 
is the final responsibility of ARM. So the main objective is, is to accomplish without exposing the bank to excessive risk of default. So in this one, the, the, AOLs, the ALM has to ensure that different assets and liabilities of a different time band should be matched and control the areas received, control the rates received and paid to asset liabilities to maximize the spread or net interest income. Now, the third one is spread management. Spread or margin, known differently as interest spread or interest margin, or net interest spread margin, or net interest income, refers to the difference between interest earned on deployment and interest paid on the acquisition of financial resources. So spread management or spread of margin is also known as interest spread or interest margin. And it is refers, it refers to the difference between interest earned on deployment and interest paid on the acquisition of financial resources. Now, spread maximization strategies involve. The first one is reducing banks exposure to cyclic, cyclical rates and stabilizing earnings over the long period. Second is predicting rate changes and planning for such eventualities. Third, coordinating rate structure and balancing default risk on loans and investment against probable benefits. So these are the various strategies for spread maximization. The next one, next objective is gap management. Gap refers to the difference between assets and liabilities that can be impacted due to the change in the interest rates. Such assets liabilities are referred to as rate sensitive assets and rate sensitive liabilities. Now, for the gap management purpose, the assets and liabilities are distributed of over different time bands, calling for the first one, identifying and matching assets and liabilities of a different time bands, optimizing the earnings over a complete economic cycle without moving to an extreme position during one phase. And the last one is building a mechanism to expand and contract asset liabilities in response to rate cycle phase. So gap refers to the difference between assets and liabilities that can be impacted due to the change in interest rates. And such assets and liabilities are called rate sensitive assets and rate sensitive liabilities. Now, just for the gap management purpose, the assets and liabilities are distributed over different time bands so that liabilities and assets can be identified and match over different time bands. And also they can build a mechanism to expand and contract assets liabilities in response to rate cycle phases. The last objective is interest sensitivity analysis. This analysis is an extrapolation of gap management strategy. It concerns with the analysis of the impact of interest changes on the bank spread margin and resultant overall earnings. So basically, interest sensitive analysis, it's concerned with analyzing the impact of interest changes on bank spread and resulting overall earnings. This strategy includes the first one, separating fixed and variable interest rate components of balance sheet. Second, listing assumptions regarding rate, volume and mix of the projected portfolio. Third, making alternative assumptions on rise and fall in interest rates. So these are the main objective of assets liabilities management. That includes planning to meet liquidity needs, arranging maturity pattern of assets liability, spread management, gap management, and interest sensitivity analysis. Now, the next thing we are going to talk about is function of ALCO. There, is, there are various functions of AL, ALCO that includes review economic scenario, articulate the interest rate review, price assets and liabilities, and many more. So the major functions of ALCO includes ensure that the measurement and reporting system accurately convey the degree of liquidity risk, interest rate risk, and foreign exchange risk. Second, Monitor the structure and composition of assets and liabilities. 
identifying balance sheet management issues like balance sheet gaps, interest rate gaps, etc., that are leading to underperformance. Third, decide on major aspects of balance sheet structure, such as maturity and currency mix of assets and liabilities, mix of wholesale versus retailing funding. Fourth, decide on how to respond to significant actual and expected increases and decreases in need for the funding. Fifth, develop maturity profile and mix of incremental assets and liabilities. Sixth, articulate interest rate view of the bank and deciding on the future business strategy. Seventh, review and revise funding policy. Next is decide on the transfer pricing policy. Evaluate market risk involved in launching of new products. Review deposit pricing strategy. And last is review liquidity contingency plan. So these are the various functions of AOL, AOLC that includes articulate interest rate, examining loan portfolio, measure liquidity risk and forex risk, review performance of the bank, involved in budgeting, planning and etc. The next thing that we are going to talk about is prerequisites for ALM. For ensuring that ALM process is undertaken successfully, each bank has to recognize that happenings, recognize the happenings in the marketplace. Now, these happenings could be first is volatility of interest rate. With the market-driven economies, the forces operating the market decide the interest rate structure. Volatile interest rates extend opportunities as also creates threat for ALM. The possible profits or losses are compared to statistic and passive market conditions. The next one is changing deposited mix. Third is increasing operating expenses. Fourth, changing asset con con com composition. Fifth, enhance significance of capital adequacy considerations. Sixth, increasing regulatory prescriptions and above all, seventh, putting in place appropriate technology as the decision support system. So these are the various prerequisites for ALM. That is, these are the various mis mishappenings that can happen in the marketplace. That is volatility of interest rate, changing deposit mix, increase operating, increasing operating expenses, changing asset composition and et cetera. The next thing that we are going to talk about is the primary requirements for ALM to be successful include. First, managers taking an overall than a narrow functional view of the bank. Second, creating means to break down complex problems for resolution and decision making. Third, allowing changes in the bank in banking environment. Fourth, relating decisions under ALM to maximization of shareholders value. And the last is development and adoption of a clear-cut ALM policy. So these are the various primary requirements for ALM to be useful. That includes that taking an overall view rather than a narrow view of the bank, creating to break down complex problems for resolution and decision making, allowing changes in the bank environment, and relating decisions under ALM to the maximization of shareholders' value. The next thing that we are going to talk about is this sec that is the asset liability, liability management tools. So the asset liability management tools are price sensitive, sensitive gap, next liquidity gap, net interest income at risk, and the last one is duration gap analysis. So the first one is price sensitivity gap. The first asset liability management tool is price sensitivity gap report. The report evaluates the impact on the economic value of balance sheet items of shifts in a given term structure. The second one is liquidity gap. This the liquidity gap report, which evaluates the liquidity gap and accesses the overall concentration of assets and liabilities across the maturity bucket. The next one is net interest income at risk. 
the NII at risk report showed the impact of interest rate shocks on cumulative gaps for on balance sheet and off balance sheet items for different maturities. These gaps are as calculated for the rate sensitivity report. The last tool is duration gap analysis. The vulnerability of an institution towards the adverse movements of the interest rate can be gauged by using the duration gap analysis. This is carried out using the following procedure. So, so we have mainly four tools of asset management, asset liability management, price sensitivity gap, it impacts of shift in term structure on economic value. Next is liquidity gap, gap between liquid assets and liquid liabilities. Third is net NII at risk, impact on interest rate shocks on net interest income. And last one is duration gap, impact of a rise in interest rates on market value of equity. So the next one we are going to talk is structure of AOL is ALCO. So the structure of ALCO comprises of these departments. The super that the higher is chairman, the next is asset liability, then is treasury department, then credit department, then planning department, and the last one is IT department. So this is the structure of ALCO. So in this video, we have learned that Asset Liability Committee, ALCO, help to advise on risk and asset management within different types of financial institutions. ALCOs look to find mismatches or potential pitfalls that can threaten the profitability and solvency of the institution as a whole. The committee plays a pivotal role in fostering communication and raising issues surrounding risk, liquidity, and potential interest rate fluctuations. ALCOs can aid investors in properly addressing the risk being taken with their financial institution and determining their investment portfolio. Thank you. Have a nice day.